got a goal, so. selected or whatever, rested, you know, and I'm, I'm a fan as well, so, yeah, you just, it is like, it's the same feeling, you just lose yourself. Yeah. If you can... Will you miss that? Uh, yeah, because you, it's, it's very hard to, to replace that. Yeah, I will, I will miss that, I will miss that feeling. I didn't get it too often in the last... <laughs> you didn't get it last season as well. <laughs> no. I saw, I saw you talk about that, actually, and you were... You were gutted that you didn't score for the first time in the Premier League in, in the last season. Were yeah. you itching to get a penalty in the last game? Did, did, if, if United would have got a penalty, would you have taken it? Was it already arranged? Yeah, I would have, well, as manager, I would have took it. Oh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> um, you had a full rank. You had a free kick towards the end of that game as well, and it was tipped over yeah. the bars. So you must have been gutted. That looked like it was going in. No, I, saw, I was just happy with the strike, actually. I got, yeah. talked, I, did, I, I got talked into taking it. It was too far out for me. I don't think I've... Ever struck it? Oh come on! Yeah, come so on, you have. You I was so quite happy. happy with the way. It, no, I was that it. the one box that's untipped? You didn't score. I mean, it's such a tiny box that you could leave it untipped. Yeah, right? it would have been nice, but I didn't. To be honest, I didn't really get that many opportunities either. I would have been more gutted if, like, I'd missed an open net or I'd yeah. missed a couple of chances. But I didn't really. There's not. There's not one thing that I can think of I should have scored in that game. So. No. Is it the same feeling scoring a goal from a, a worldie to a tap in? No, I, I think it's how important a goal is. So if it's a tapping and it's a winner, it's much better than scoring a worldie and you, you're already 4 0 okay. It's a free kick, but play on to the referee. Everett, Young, needs a good ball in. Gigs coming in! Who writes his script? On his 900th appearance, Ryan Giggs scores the winner for Manchester United. And what a winner! Two. I'm staying with the, the when you, you broke through into the United side, of course, one of the players that came to Old Trafford then was Eric Cantona. What was he like? Did you hang around with him? Yeah, I mean, I hang around with, I mean, yeah, I mean, in them days, we used to go out quite a bit because we'd, uh, if it was an away game, the coach would drop you off and everyone would stop around for a few pints and Eric, Eric would do that all the time and I, you live this side of Manchester, so... I would often give him lifts or uh, pick him up for training or pick him up for games. So I spent a little bit of time with him, but he was great. He was, you know, he had this aura about him, and he he was obviously different from the rest of the players. But within the team, within the squad, he was uh, just another teammate. A little sense of excitement as Eric Cantona gets the ball. What can he create for Manchester United? Well, he spots a gap, and Ryan Giggs dashes through there, draws the goalkeeper. Can he finish it? Yes, he can. Your relationship with Paul is, of course, um, was, was very famous. This that goal celebration. Uh, how did that come about? They looked so rehearsed. They were. <laughs> well, Incy was my roommate right from the beginning, really. So we just instantly clicked when I came to the first team. He was early twenties, so um, yeah, we just one of them things where you just hit it off with someone and mates ever since. Is the, the manager, or did he at the time, did he frown on things like that? I remember Lee Sharp's goal celebrations at Everton with the corner flag and, and I think at Southampton as well with the sharp shuffle. Yeah, what I understand, no, I he wasn't a fan of them. Yeah, I don't think he was a fan, but he wasn't that. He didn't make it known that he was really that bothered. I think if you, you're scoring, then he wasn't too yeah. fast. How long did you spend on working on a routine? Well, it wasn't 
the most complicated routine, was it? So not, not is, is there any? Is there a private joke behind that? Is no, I, do you know what? I can't even remember. I can't even remember. No. Blame it on Insta. What do you What do you make of goal celebrations that, that are planned out? Do you like them? Football is a entertainment, and I mean, you see kids now. They do. They do copy everything that you do. You know, you can see it in the back garden with, with my young lad. You know, he's doing it all that. Does he take it off and swear? No, no, he doesn't. Okay. No, I'm not showing him that goal yet. Have you not? <laughs> do you pause it straight? There you go, went in. <laughs> what, no, Dad, keep yeah. it. No, 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 you don't need to see it after that. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, it's part of entertainment, so... Yeah, I don't mind. Did it affect your fame at all? Looking back now? No, be no because I was still doing normal things, really. Back then, you... The, you would be walking down the street and someone would look at you and either acknowledge you or, you know, just... You, you can see people looking at you now. It's straight over. It's the camera phones. Yeah. They've got a reason to, to, to sort of come over to get a picture with you. But it was a time as well when United fans were desperate for success and you're responsible, you're partly responsible for that su success. So they obviously put you up there on a pedestal as a, as a god that's brought them back the league title. So, I mean, when, whenever you, you went out as a... As a youngster, you must have got recognised. You must have got hassle, which is which is not the norm for a young kid growing up. Yeah, because it happened when I was 17, and it become it become the norm. So I would go out to, to bars and clubs, and yeah, people would come over and they'd either say nice things about you because they're a United fan, or they'd give you a bit of stick because they're a City or Liverpool fan, and it just become the norm. So um, it never got out of hand either way. How, how did you deal with it? so well because a lot of footballers have uh, not been able to deal with it and it's ruined their career were you aware of it growing up that you were wrapped in cotton wool and there were people looking out for you yeah, I was aware of it and I was quite comfortable with it I think it's it's, it's right up to a point I mean it, we live in a different world now but back then it was you'd have a couple of football magazines a couple of football shows and that was it and I mean I started doing interviews at you know 19, 20 which because I got into the team at 17, they wanted instant access and I probably wasn't ready for it, I'd just left school.